Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rob and I hope you're doing well. Today I thought I would make a video guitar lesson, just explaining three quick ways to be able to visualize the guitar neck to try and find the same notes in different places up and down the neck, to stop you from staying stuck in the same area all the time, playing the same licks over and over again, and to help you travel across the neck a little bit more easily, because as guitar players we're all guilty of playing the same licks over and over again, and struggling to break out of that and break out of the same boxes that we're so used to doing. So today I'm gonna to show you how I visualize the fretboard, and talk about three things that help me find the same notes that I need up and down the neck pretty quickly. Well, some of these are gonna be pretty obvious to the more advanced guitar player, so if you've been playing a while, you probably already know what I'm about to say. But if you're new to the guitar, or you're not too sure about notes and stuff like that, then stick around, check this video out, and hopefully it'll help you out. Okay, so my first tip is something I like to call the two down, two up method. And what this basically means is if we take any note on this bottom E string, let's pick the third fret, which is a G note. If we play that, we have a G note. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go two strings down, and two frets up, which then takes me to the fifth fret. And that is also a G note. So I've got my G note here on the third fret of the low E string. And I got two strings down and two frets up. And there we have another G note. And this works for any fret, any note, starting at the low E string, wherever you are. Let's say C for argument's sake. I've got two strings down and two frets up. And I'm there with another C note. It also works starting at the fifth string as well. So that C note I played there, I can play it on the third fret of the fifth string, which is also C. And I can go two strings down and two frets up there. And there's another C note. When you get to the fourth string, you can go two strings down, but you have to go three frets up. That's because everything shifts up one fret when you get to the B string. So if we played the third fret of the D string, that's an F note. If I went two strings down and three frets up this time, that takes me to my next F note. Two strings down, three frets up, F note. And the same goes from the third string down to the top string. The third fret of the G string is a B flat. And if I went two strings down and three frets up, there's another B flat note. And that works all up and down the fretboard, whatever note you're starting on. It's either two strings down and two frets up for the fifth and sixth string, or for anything else, it's two strings down and three frets up will take you to the same note that you started at. This is a really good thing to think about whilst you're playing, because if you know where to find the same note that you started at somewhere else pretty quickly, whilst you're playing, you can jump to that note and play the same things, but starting somewhere else, which takes your playing to a different part of the neck and gives your playing a different sound. What I mean by that is if I take a G major scale for argument's sake. That's a G major scale. Let's just say that's the only way I knew how to play a G major scale. But now if I do the two down, two up method, I've got two strings down and two frets up, which takes me to another G. Now I can play that exact same scale, but I can start there instead. And I can go like this now. Keeping in mind that when I get to the B string, everything shifts up a fret. So if I didn't shift it up a fret, it would sound weird. Now it would sound like this. So starting at the new G note that I've found, I can play it again. When I get to the B string, I shift up a fret, and now it sounds like this. Another thing I can do in this situation, once I know this, is I can link those two shapes together. So let's say that I only knew that first shape, and now I've just figured out that I can play the second shape because I know where to find another G note to start on. Now I've made my shape twice as big. Now I'm back to G, so when my little finger is here, is now my starting point for the second time round of playing the G major scale, starting there. But instead of playing it on my little finger, I can swap back to my second finger, which is the one that I started the first shape on, and I can play the same thing just starting here. And then skip up a fret. So if I put that all together, now I've got this. But also don't forget that I said that if you're on the D string, you can go two strings down and three frets up, which would take me to a third G note. So just to recap that, I've basically found the same note in three different positions. My starting note, which is G. I've gone two strings down, two frets up. Also G, two strings down and three frets up. Also G. And like I said, if I knew any scales that start on this low G note here, I can also play them at my new positions that I've found. So if I only knew this first position to start with, now I suddenly know three different positions, which will take my playing from staying in just this area here to this area, this area, and this area, helping me travel pretty far up the neck, which would sound like this.
really cool, right? Hopefully that isn't too complicated to follow. And you can try that all the way up and down the fretboard with different notes. Okay, my second way of looking at the fretboard and visualizing it is even easier than that one. And that's basically by keeping my eye on the 12th fret and knowing that if I play the 12th fret and any string, that note is the same as what the string would be if I played it open. So if I play the 12th fret on that low E string, I've got an E note there and I've got an E note open. I've got an A note, A note, D, G, B, and E. And it's a really useful thing to remember because obviously if this is the 12th fret, it's basically the same as the open string. So that must mean that the 13th fret is the same as the first fret. So whatever note the first fret would be down here, the 13th fret would also be the same note on all of the strings. As we were talking earlier about the key of G, we were playing a G on the low E string on the third fret, which was here. But also if we think about the 12th fret being the open string, then the 13th fret would be the same as the first fret, the 14th fret would be the same as the second fret, and the 15th fret would be the same as the third fret. So if we try that now, the 15th fret, should be the same as the third fret. So now I have this G here where I started and I've just found another one at the 15th fret of my guitar here. So everything that I can play starting at this G down here, I can also play at this G up here. So as we were talking earlier about the major scale, I can play that again here. And I've just found that the 15th fret is also a G note, so I can play that exact same shape starting here now. And like I said earlier, I linked the G note here to the G note here and the one here that I found by doing the two down, two up method, two down, three up. And I can also apply that same note starting at this G note that I've just found up here. So I could play my G major scale at the 15th fret and continue it exactly the same way I did down here. So that's pretty cool because I've suddenly gone from only knowing one note and one scale, in this instance, G, to being able to find more G notes in two different ways, which then allow me to play just the one scale that I knew in different places, which has then taken me at first all the way up to here, and then starting at the 15th fret is taking me all the way up here. So I pretty much spanned the entire fretboard with two simple rules. As long as I knew where to start in the first place and how to play anything starting at this G note, I can play the, exactly the same things at all the other G notes that I can find. As I said earlier, it could even be something as simple as the pentatonic. So if I play a normal minor pentatonic starting at the G that I already knew. I went two strings down, two frets up, and I played it there. Don't forget to shift up a fret when you get to the B string. So now I've got it there as well. And from the D string, I go two strings down and three frets up to my next G. I could start my minor pentatonic there. So I've got that same pentatonic shape that I knew starting in three different places, but also I could apply method two and remembering that the 15th fret is the same as the third fret. So I could also play that pentatonic scale now starting at the 15th fret. And again, I could also start going two strings down and two frets up, which takes me here. I could start my pentatonic scale starting there as well upper fret on my B string. This is just examples of how I can now visualize the same thing that I already knew in different places of the neck by using these two methods. And as I said earlier, I've got one more, which I've already kind of talked about today which is the easiest of the three, but again, you'd be amazed how many people forget this, especially new players. They seem to forget that you've got two strings which are the same note. You've got a low E string and you've got a high E string. So when people are learning scales, I find that they get very confident where they start, but as they go down the strings, they get a little less confident and they start guessing a bit more. So if there's anywhere that you definitely don't have to guess, that's on the high E string, because if you know where you started on the low E string, the high E string is gonna be exactly the same notes. So if you started your pentatonic scale, again, let's use the key of G. Then on my high E string, it's gonna be exactly the same as the low E string. Which is so easy to remember, and I know a lot of people know that. So if you're new to playing scales, that's one thing that I definitely recommend keeping in mind when you're trying to visualize the scales and trying to remember them, is that the starting string, the low E, is the same as the high E and vice versa. So anything that you play on this low E string will also be the same on the high E string. So now we can put all of those three little methods and things to think about together 
to be able to find the same note in various places all up and down the neck. So still thinking about G, we had the one that we started on, on the low E string, third fret. You go two strings down, two frets up. Another G, we go two strings down, three frets up from the fourth string. There's another G. But also if we had this G on the third fret of the low E string, it's also going to be the third fret of the high E string, isn't it? So there's another G. So, so far we got one, two, three, four, four Gs. But also method number two was talking about everything after the 12th fret is the same as it is down here. So if we know that the third fret is a G note here, we said the 15th fret would also be a G note. And then if we said everything on the high E string is the same as the low E string, that would make the 15th fret on the high E string also a G note. So if you put those together, we have all of these. So there's six right there, but also we can add even more to it by starting at this G here and going down two strings, up two frets, and then down two strings and up three frets. So altogether, just from knowing one G note, but knowing three different rules, now suddenly we found all of these G notes. And also don't forget we talked about the open strings in the 12th fret. In this case, we were talking about G. We know that if we play the third string by itself, that is a G note. And as we said earlier, if we play the 12th fret, that note will also be the same. That will be a G note. So we can add that to it as well. So now we have all of these G notes. And as I said, anything that I can play starting at any G note, I can then play starting at any other G note that I can find all the way up and down the neck. So when I'm jamming over a backing track or playing live or anything like that, it's really good to think about these things that I've talked about so that rather than just staying in the same position, playing the same thing over and over again, I can try and travel up to the other G notes that I'll be able to find really, really quickly by knowing those three methods and keeping those three different things in mind. And today we were only talking about one note, which was G, but if you know all of the notes on the low E string, then you'll be able to use the same methods that we talked today to find where those notes repeat and hopefully take your playing to the next level by being able to visualize more of the fretboard quicker and easier. So there you go guys, that is three ways that I visualize my guitar fretboard to try and help me to play up and down the neck a little bit easier and try and find the same notes in multiple different places. So if you enjoyed the video then please let me know in the comments and if you want to see any more lessons then hit the subscribe button, I'm going to be making a lot more soon. So I hope you found this useful and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.